Hello folks and welcome back to another Monday Rules. I apologize that this Monday Rules episode is coming out so late. Um, I wasn't really feeling too good today and I decided to spend pretty much most of the day resting up. I um, feel a little bit better right now so I'm definitely going to try to get this video recorded and uploaded as quickly as I can. So first up, all the honorable mentions for last week's challenge, the Tier 7 Cruiser Citadel Challenge. And I'm wondering if you see a common pattern here. <laughs> The majority of the ships that made it to the honorable mentions were Pensacolas, with two exceptions, uh, one with 13 citadels in Atlanta by hers, and 10 citadels in Miyoko by Deuce Cannon. And by the way, hers, uh, the Atlanta battle was nicely done. I watched your uh, masterful use of the 127mm armor piercing against cruisers. However, the Pensacola results definitely suggest that if you happen to be sailing a Pensacola, you really should be considering firing AP more. But let's meet our winner, and our winner is not in a Pensacola, actually. Surprisingly, um, X Madao X is actually in a Miyoko, um, which is kind of surprising considering like I thought after seeing all the honorable mentions that maybe the winner would be in a Pensacola too. But Nope, so let's see what Madao had to do in order to win last week's Tier 7 Cruiser Citadel Challenge. And before I even get going, because I've seen the replay a little bit already, I can tell you that Madao is really, really aggressive. Um, has absolutely no qualms of getting into knife fighting ranges with everything, and you'll see this soon enough. But Madao starts off a little bit further back, engaging enemy cruisers, and of course, AP is really, really effective at shooting enemy cruisers. So lands two citadels there, doing 12,000 damage on Nova. Now, I want you to do one thing, which is I want you to pay attention to Madao's position in relation to the destroyers on his own team. And this is something that I theorized about a long time ago as the role for the Japanese cruisers, which is because the Japanese cruisers are faster, maybe their job instead of staying back and, you know, letting supporting fire until, of course, you've reached the higher tiers. But when you're at the lower tiers, I think their role is to escort the destroyers, go up with the destroyers and then provide fire support against enemy cruisers that come out to counter your own team's destroyers. And I think this is what Madao does is because as a cruiser he's pretty much right there with his destroyers and when the enemy cruisers come out to contest the destroyer on Madao's team from capping he's able to support them with 203mm armor piercing shells. Now I also have to praise Madao's team because again if you look at the minimap Madao himself is being supported by two of his own battleships. So the enemy cruisers no longer want to contest the cap because if they come in, they're going to have to deal with both Mudau and his supporting battleships. But the enemy cruisers, well, they're giving him broadsides, which means Mudau's going to be able to claim a bunch of Citadel hits. So there's two more on the Miyoko over there. The enemy team's Omaha turns in to support their Mutsuki, which has already crept to a very, very, very close range. Only about, I believe, at the point of firing its torpedoes, like three and a half kilometers. And the Mutsuki fires too early and makes a terrible misplay. Fires off the torpedo when Madao is giving the smallest possible target and Madao very easily dodges all the torpedoes. Oh, and Madao gets like three more citadels off the Miyoko over there. But think about this scenario here. Had that destroyer saved its torpedoes for a little bit longer until the Omaha got into a better position, then right about, let's say right now, Madao would be sandwiched between destroyer torpedoes on one side and Omaha torpedoes on the other, and that would have led to a very easy kill for the enemy team. But the Mutsuki fire too early, and of course leaves the Omaha stranded, which Madao finishes off with another five glorious citadels. And so that's already, by this point in time, 12 citadel hits, and right in front of Madao is the Aoba from earlier, as well as two Mutsukis. And just like earlier, when the Mitsuki and the Omaha didn't really combo effectively, it's going to happen again, and these two destroyers are going to misplay. Now, Madao first finishes off that Aoba that he had hit earlier for a lot of damage, gets one more Citadel off of the Aoba, that's 13 Citadels in total. So, let's go back and look at these two destroyers. The Miyoko that Madao is sailing has turned away, no longer presenting you with a broadside. So at this particular point, as two destroyers, you're essentially trying to do a chase of a cruiser, which is a really, really bad idea. 
So the ideal situation is to just disengage for the two destroyers, just to disengage or to start figuring out how they're going to work together and try to sandwich Mudau between two torpedo spreads. But since Mudau's already turned away and is essentially retreating, there's no point for two destroyers to try to chase down one cruiser and to gun him down. No matter how great you think your guns are, you're really not going to be able to kill a cruiser, even one at relatively low HP, because when that cruiser turns around and starts to fire at you with HE, it's going to be able to take you down a whole lot faster. What the two destroyers probably should have done at this point in time was disengage from engaging a cruiser and then try to torp the battleship that's going down the 6 line and you know try to take that B cap. Instead, by trying to engage Madao with guns, well, you kind of figure out what the conclusion is going to be because Madao very quickly is going to dispatch one of those destroyers with his guns and then of course the other one which comes back out is going to make for an equally easy target for Madao to deal with. Because like you saw earlier, when it's a cruiser versus a destroyer and the cruiser is not really giving that destroyer an easy shot at close range and the destroyer is depending on HE, it's not going to work that well because the cruiser really has an advantage. And so that second destroyer basically gave Madao a free kill. So before even halfway through this battle, Madao's basically done almost 90,000 damage, will soon pick up his fourth kill, and basically has a straight line to the enemy carrier. And had Mudau actually gotten lucky with that carrier, could have scored a bunch more Citadel hits. However, luck wasn't on Mudau's side, and the carrier engagement netted him a high caliber and a confederate, but no additional Citadel hits. And of course, his own destroyer gets up close and personal and torps the carrier. Now, remember when I praised Mudau's team for actually playing together? Well, the destroyers did. Mudau as a cruiser did. But the battleships on Mudau's team did for about, ooh, I don't know, a minute? 60 seconds? And then they basically decided to go do whatever they wanted. And so those two battleships, where the arrow is, basically have been on that border for more than a quarter of the battle. Well, at least not on the border, but near that border completely ineffective for a quarter of the battle. And they end up costing Mudau's team a win. And seeing battleship players like this drives me freaking crazy. And oh yes, rant warning because a rant's coming. Ah, if you're in a battleship, okay, think about your ship for a second. You've got all that health, you've got all that armor, you've got the guns that can absolutely cripple cruisers. And if you choose to sit 17, 18, 20 kilometers away from things and little try to snipe things that are hard to hit at that range, what good are you for your team? You don't help with the objectives. You don't help the team in terms of supporting the push. You don't do anything. You're useless. And I see players like this in both ranked and I see them in random. And it drives me nuts because they will like abandon you to go do something completely unimportant like these two battleships did because... If you watch, and I've, I'm speeding up the video clip here, they just don't do anything. And when they finally decide to get off the border and to pull their heads out of their rear ends and start to move towards the enemy at all, the battle is essentially lost. They've lost all of their ships. So battleship players, please be a little bit more aggressive. Passiveness in battleship play absolutely kills. So even with only 742 HP, Mudau was still in the front lines of his team trying to delay the inevitable as the enemy team slowly closes around him. But of course Mudau was doing a challenge so I'm pretty sure even as he had no HP left he was still going to try to get an additional one or two Citadel hits because it was going to be worth it. So Mudau continues to fight tries to target the ships that he knows that he can get reliable citadels on. So over there on the, in the distance are Furutaka and behind him an Omaha. And these two ships are going to net uh, mud out the remaining citadel hits necessary. But as you can see, the battleships, when they finally get up here, what use are they? They are going to be taking fire from both directions and will die reasonably quickly. The only advantage of having these battleships come up in this particular instance is the fact that they're going to just act as a, a bit of an extra meat shield for Mudau as he tries to rack up one or two more Citadel hits. Speaking of shooting, um, by the way Mudau, um, at this kind of range, like 13 kilometers, 
I would actually recommend that you zoom in a little bit more. It will make ships like an Omaha a little bit easier to hit, and you should see a little bit increase in accuracy when you're firing at this kind of range. A, a little bit further out, if your shell hang times are a little bit more, you could probably zoom out a little bit, but if it's within like 12 kilometers, I would say that zooming in a little bit more should actually help you land those extra Citadel hits. But anyways, uh, Mudhouse still does good, uh, focuses initially on the Omaha that was presenting him with a bit of a broadside, claims another Citadel hit there, although the Omaha is not going to present him another Citadel after that, as the Omaha does very quickly turn bow in, and so Mudhouse has to change targets and eventually switches over to the Furutaka. Again, this Furutaka at this close of a range, like I said, you know, it would have been better I think if he zoomed in just a little bit. But, of course, that's about it because the island decides to block Madao from really progressing and he is going to get finished off by uh, one of the enemy vessels. And there he goes. So, at the end of the battle here, Madao accomplishes 16 Citadel hits in a Miyoko. Congratulations on that. Let's take a look at your final results screen. So, even on that defeat, Madao manages 288,744 credits. 2018 experience, 101 free experience, 1 devastating strike, 1 confederate, 1 high caliber, 16 citadel hits, and a ton of damage. So let's take a look at how much damage Madao actually managed here. Over 130,000 damage in a Miyoko. Congratulations, that is amazing. Oh yeah, and of course there's one last thing we do have to look at. Let's take a look at the base experience there. <laughs> On a loss, Madao had 1,834 base experience, more than any ship on the winning team. <laughs> That's incredible. Congratulations, Madao. Keep your eye open on your email box as I'll be sending you some doubloons. And of course, we have to talk about this week's challenge. This week's challenge is inspired by Paul Griffith, who complained a little bit that can't really try the Monday Rules contest because it's all premium ships, CVs, or higher tiers. Okay, so Paul... This one's for you. Um, basically, all you have to do is play a Tier 4 Destroyer. That could be either the Japanese, the American, or the Russian Destroyer, so any one of those. And just do the highest amount of damage possible with all available weapon systems. And that's pretty much it. Get out there, do tons of damage in your Tier 4 Destroyers, send me your screenshots and your replays, and remember, Monday rules. Well, I derped hard. So I finished the episode started to get it uploaded and like midway through it suddenly realized that I had edited something and I had messed the timing of the video up completely so had to you know scrap it and redo it I don't think I'm still feeling like 100% today so um, you know I do apologize that I'm getting this up on like a Tuesday for many of you in Europe anyways um, just once again good luck on this week's challenge I'm looking forward to seeing some of your results and until next time have a good one